What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another East versus West, the only podcast to bring you social distancing at its finest from East to the West. Ooh, I'm going to have to take this off, though. I can't breathe. Oof. Yeah, I can't either. I can't breathe. <clears throat> we're, we're pretty far away to the point where we don't need masks to talk to yeah. each other, so. Yeah. He did give me the flu on the last podcast we did together, but. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to be talking about the HHN 30 leaked speculation lineup map. However you want to come out and say it. Um, it is what it is. Take it with a tiny grain of salt. Potential spoilers ahead for if this is correct. This is not our map. We do not condone to linking. We don't. We're just we're just the news passers. Yeah, we're kind of kind of just giving our our thoughts on the potential. It's always fun um, as as big fans of of the event to kind of just speculate. Um, speculation videos is always something that does really well for us and talking about. The potential of what could come or what we want to come is always fun. Exactly. So this is HHN 30. If you guys seen earlier this week, I did put out one for Hollywood. So if you guys want to see the Hollywood one, go check that out uh, with our, our good friend, the Hauntline, Jonathan, um, who has his own channel now. And he breaks it down into further depth. So go watch his video as well. Shameless plug. Also, Eddie put out a video uh, as of this recording this morning. Um kind of given his speculation for HHN 30. Yeah, and it's so. a it's a varied speculation. It's not just about what's coming, it's the impact of the current state of things as well as some personal speculation which is a little bit outside of the box. So, it's not your typical speculation just going off of w what the rumors are. It's a a little bit different of a speculation video. Uh yeah, for sure. Yeah, he does his own kind of opinions rather than what this map says, which is cool. Um, for starters, I want to shout out, uh, Horror Night Nightmares, HN Nightmares on Twitter for, uh, releasing this. Uh, the reason why we're covering his map is because he has been right in the past of some, a lot of properties that have come to HHN and, um, we don't know what, how that is. We don't know why that is, but you know, I'm going to see what he has guessing for HHN 30 cause I might yeah. be attending this year and. And this this is also his his like first version throughout the the like speculation season and announcement season he does update it so if you look at the at the post it is version 1.0 <laughs> yeah this is version 1.0 we covered version 1.0 on our on our uh, podcast as well so uh, yeah let's let's jump right into it starting with Billy Eilish. Yeah. I've already given my thoughts on this maze and how I feel about it, but I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, um, from a West Coast perspective, I, I haven't been to your event, so I don't know how you could fit it into your park per se. But for ours, um, I, I I don't see it as a house. I just I can't see it as a house. But we do have that Lagoon show last year. Um, the what was it called? It was like a mayhem. Mayhem and Madden and Madness and Mayhem or uh, Yeah, something like that. And it was an amazing Lagoon show with uh, a bunch of projection on water screens and music playing. So given that it's the 30th anniversary, I could see her fitting in. This is how she could fit in the best is same concept. You got those water screens, projections of the history of Halloween Horror Nights the past 30 years with the music of Billie Eilish. So I and you could use her current music. She doesn't even need to come up with a, a like a new soundtrack just for Halloween Horror Nights in this case, um, because you could fit in some of her songs. It, it's really just kind of like background noise and kind of uh, dramatic effect, not necessarily having to be tailored to horror. In if you do it that way, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the only way that I could see her coming to the event. I mean, the general consensus is that most fans don't want this but i will say this there's been plenty of times people don't want something but universal studios could pull things off um it doesn't necessarily need to be 100 percent horror for universal studios to bring it to halloween horror nights and it for it to work they can kind of spin it into horror so if this ended up being a house which i don't think that possibility is too high if it ended up being a house i'm sure they can make something of it and yeah. 
the teeny boppers and huge fans of Billie Eilish will end up loving it. And some of the true fans of the event may end up enjoying it as well. Um, last year, for example, they brought your boy Rob Zombie. And his house wasn't terrible. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. Still, it was at the end of my of my anticipated list. But it, it was much better than I expected it to be. So that, To be <laughs> fair, though, that property itself goes back a long way prior to it being a movie. That actually was an original maze set to be at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, Gosh it, darn. <laughs> that happened to be an original maze Murdy actually planned up with Rob Zombie. And then Rob Zombie uh, ended up making it into a movie. And then it came as a movie. So, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, with, with the scare zone that they had last year... Uh, I mean, it's it's different with Rob Zombie and Billie Eilish. I think Rob Zombie very much bases his music around Halloween and and uh, you know a lot of the the Halloween lore and and just like a lot of the you know satanic lore and all that and and yeah. you know classic monsters and stuff. Uh, as compared to Billie Eilish, like like I said, I really haven't listened to her music, so I I can't really even base an argument around this, but. If you guys listen to the podcast that we put out this past week talking about the Hollywood version, the only way th – th this is the only way uh, all three of us agreed how this can work as a maze would be if Billie Eilish came out and released an original soundtrack that actually tied into this maze, and they can work around that. Other than that uh, – and 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 we were also saying that like you know Orlando can do their own version of it and Hollywood can do their own version of it because – that's usually how it works when when properties like this come to the event. Like a perfect example is Universal Monsters. I mean, Orlando did their own version with it. Of course, we had our version with Slash, and it was essentially like the same property, just two different style mazes. Yeah. Um, and with Billie <laughs> Eilish, you can't necessarily just put her music, her current music, into a maze and 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 do that. You have to. I, I would think you would have to have an original score or, or soundtrack to that that revolves around a mace telling the story you can't just throw in her music and then tell a story i mean i guess there's ways creatively to work around that but i think the best route would go to create original music that tells a story into the maze that you're bringing to this event yeah and rob zombie may have not been the best comparison but a comparison nonetheless because rob zombie is obviously much more horror than she is yeah uh, but if you look at the map the speculation map, it actually does have it positioned as a house. So it's section E, which is the MIB area tents, the mm. sprung tents. So um, one one good thing about that is the sprung tents don't tend to be the main event. Yeah. So um, if it's just a house to kind of fluff things up with some kind of like intellectual content, then cool whatever we'll see how, how it goes there's also talks of uh an 11th house uh an 11th house, uh, 11th house coming to the event this year you can't spoke today <laughs> i know man i can't even speak. um i will say this though i i and I, this is what i'm going to say as far as advertising and merchandising goes i think billy eilish gremlins adventures of sabrina the universal monsters and beetlejuice will be there pull in properties for this year those will be the things you see on all the advertisements usually hhn is famous for making a a kind of a trailer based around properties that are going to be featured at the event which they think is the most popular and i think these uh oh and also haunting of hill house um these uh six properties are uh, are speculated to be at both events and i feel like i think billy eilish has a huge fan base and that will bring a lot of people who normally don't come to this event much like how stranger things did um they'll bring a lot more revenue and money into this event uh because a lot of fan there's a lot of fans of billy eilish um it, and going back to stranger things that's exactly what that property did there was a lot of people who never went to the event but the minute stranger things got added the event got 10 times worse yeah and um uh, one thing to credit Losh, Losh and I had an argument about, or a debate, not an argument, a debate about Billie Eilish recently, and he's actually for it. Um, but one thing that he did bring up, and like you said, she's definitely marketable. So marketing, they're, they're going to use her from the marketing aspect, but yeah. the house or positioning of the house that they're giving her is not a prime house. So another possibility could be that she gets a lower tier house with the the fountain show anyway. So she gets both. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. So Billie Eilish, yay or nay, ultimately? Uh, it, personally, nay, because 
she's taking up a spot of something else that could come. Definitely. I'm I'm a, I'm in the same way. Um, but we'll see. I mean, mazes that I've not wanted to come to the event have blown me away in the past. And yeah. Uh this one is what is how do you pronounce this? Terra the Terra hold on. It is Cre- Cre- Cretus? Cretus? Quintus? Quintus? I'm gonna go Terra Cret- Cretus. I don't know. Cretus, I don't know. Um I don't know. So it's, it has an interesting logo next to it, which kind of looks reminiscent to a Mandalorian logo for those Star Wars fans who know. Yeah, um, the the talk that I hear about this is the Terra Queen. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't have the the uh, luxury of seeing the Terra Queen in person. Yeah, um, but I know that there is a lot of lore and history behind her. I think she was Halloween Horror Nights fifteen, okay. and apparently the lore is that she returns every fifteen years. So that I think is how they're going to be fitting her in um, with this house. So this will be her own personal house. And this would be 15 years from her last sighting, which would make sense with the lore that she's backed by. Aside from that, I don't really know too much more. <clears throat> okay, so she's basically uh, every 15 years kind of person, um, which is perfect for Halloween Horror Nights 30, being its 30th anniversary, and another 15 years has gone by. Was she at the very first Halloween Horror Nights then or no? I don't believe so, but I could be wrong. Because uh, the very first Halloween Horror Nights was fright nights okay um so she may have been um she could have been in the dungeon of terror yeah um i I, so for original mazes at uh, orlando i'm gonna let eddie kind of take the spotlight for these because he knows a little bit more uh lore and info about past things that could relate to what these properties are or they're just they're just kind of made up properties that he's just kind of guessing but yeah um, and uh just kind of doing a little bit research on the spot so The Terror Queen, it seems like uh, she was kind of on top of her 15-year lore. She was kind of like the the, uh, fairy tale, like, gone wrong. Because it looks like the tagline for that year was, no one will live happily ever after. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, and I I know there was a lot of storytelling in that year. Actually, I I may have actually been at that year. The storyteller was was there too. I think I may have actually been at that year. So um, I think from a from a, a fan perspective, all fans uh, love the times of, or the years of the icons, at least for Orlando. Yeah. And if there's an opportunity to see somebody back from those years, I, I would say 100% yes. And mostly for um, a, an original property. Definitely. Which kind of ties into the next one, uh, being of a storyteller uh bedtime stories so (laughs) does this have anything to do with the storyteller i think so i think this is the same lady um which is that old creepy lady from from the same year as the terror queen the granny Uh, looking lady in her chair and everything looking lady with the chair um and i I remember damn that was a long time ago man i'm i'm old now but (laughs) (laughs) um i remember going through her house so i I think i actually was a a hhm 15 um, it would make sense. I, my first year was the 12th, so I went several years in between that, but not consistently. I've only been going consistently the last like eight years. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, she's like an old creepy lady that tells like creepy stories. And if I remember correctly, her house was filled with like creepy old dolls. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so that, that yeah. one, go ahead. What would be cool in this maze since it's called bedtime stories it would be cool that a lot of the stories revolve around the icons over the years to kind of give it not only just focusing on on the storytellers own maze but at, at, on top of that giving the other icons over the past years who've made HHN and Orlando the past 30 years some of the greatest years ever you know what i mean so like it'd be cool if you saw easter eggs of like the crypt keeper and 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 you know Jack the clown you know all these awesome the director you know, the caregiver. I think it's the caregiver, right? Is it the caregiver? Caretaker. Caretaker, yeah. Um, <laughs> caregiver. <laughs> caregiver, yeah. Uh, but it'd be cool to see. I'll take care of you. It will. Uh, it would be cool to see little Easter eggs and references to, like, each story she's telling is a story of each icon. That'd be dope. And I know that 
there there's a lot of talk about the the icons and this anniversary year so yeah i wouldn't be surprised all right the next property we have which is a shared property for both events universal monsters the bride um so with the bride uh and this is another kind of talk that we had on on the on the podcast which was the bride has been in and hollywood has been in both adaptations of universal monsters she was in universal monsters uh the first year came but she was getting chopped up and she was like a regular person still and then the second year for frankenstein meets the wolfman she was in the dracula or the uh, frankenstein's castle scene but chopped up and all burned up so it seems to me that universal or at least murdy wants to give the bride you know he wouldn't just put these easter eggs in that maze for nothing it looks like we we are going to get a story of the bride and and my theory goes since we've seen her in the first maze getting chopped up by dr frankenstein himself and then we see the aftermath of her burned alive and still alive and, and you know all chopped up and stuff my theory goes we'll probably get them if we do get a bride maze we'll get a maze of of how she was built to her coming alive to her maybe terrorizing something to her being captured again to Dr. Frankenstein trying to work on her to kind of make her different, that's when we'll get her chopped up, and that's when we'll get the uh, events of Universal Monsters and Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, which would be a really cool throwback to those two mazes in Hollywood. Um, but that's just how I would look at that story if it was if they were to do it over here in Hollywood. Yeah, no. Um, I, on this one, I, I'm going to have to lean heavy on you because as far as the Bride goes, I don't know too much about the Bride and her backstory. At, but one thing I can say is last year's Universal Monsters House was freaking amazing. So I welcome this one with open arms, mm -hmm. and I hope I hope they bring it bring it back heavy with put it into into one of the uh, what's it called the sound stages to make sure that the quality and their their special effects are amazing. However, yeah, I mean both maps are speculating the Bride of Frankenstein, and um, you know, I mean. Who knows? Maybe we could just be getting the bride, and then you guys get something else. Uh, maybe they'll translate a version of Frankenstein meets the Wolfman for you guys, so you guys get to kind of experience that one because it was a lot different last year. Because last year was your first year of getting Universal Monsters in general, so they kind of gave you guys a little bit of everything in that maze. Whereas for us, we had it the year prior to that, uh, and then the, the the last year we had uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, which was a solid and fantastic maze. I love the way it was designed and everything, and the story it told was awesome. Same goes for Orlando, though. That that maze was just solid. The effects looked amazing, and um, the the set design just looked awesome. So, I yeah, again, like you said, I am all for Universal Monsters uh, coming back. I'm not tired of it yet, and yet every year they keep up in the ante and, and just making a better maze than before, um, especially over here in Hollywood with the music by Slash. I would think the uh, ambiance of his original score adds an amazing touch to this this maze, especially what he did with Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. It was kind of like a gypsy type music, which like was really good and it fits so well with this maze. Um, so I'm all for it. If they're gonna do the Bride of Frankenstein, that's awesome. There are other universal monsters that I feel we can tell a story with. But I would love to see uh, the challenge uh, arise with the Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, no, and uh, like like I said, last year was so good. I, I I just welcome it with open arms. Definitely. So next up on our list is Beetlejuice. Now, what are your th what are your thoughts on Beetlejuice? Because I love Beetlejuice for one. And last year, if if you looked at any videos or if you guys actually went to the event. If you guys went on any of the 80s nights, which was Thursday nights at HHN, Beetlejuice was actually walking around. He was actually one of the hosts for um, 80s night. And not to mention, during the day, you can take pictures with him and stuff. So it's been kind of hinted at that Beetlejuice is going to be coming to the event for a couple years now. What are your thoughts on a Beetlejuice maze? Well, um, Beetlejuice has a lot of history with the parks. He's been around for a really long time. From the opening of the parks, he had his own show. Yeah. Um, and to this day, even when it's not close to haunt season, he's roaming the streets during the daytime. So I, I think this makes a lot of sense. I think the movie can be, if Ghostbusters could be translated, this movie could be translated. Definitely. Um, this is definitely much more horror. It is kind of like comedic horror, but I, I could see this 
going really well. I'm a huge fan of Beetlejuice. I know a lot of people, my girlfriend's sister is actually a huge fan of Beetlejuice as well. So it, funny enough, she's not a huge fan of horror, but telling her that this would be at the event, she she actually would consider coming. Uh, so you could see Beetlejuice. So um, the the movie itself is great, and there's a lot of crazy aspects like that, that kind of like long snake, the black and white long snake that he becomes. Yeah. I could see that um, being like the, the like, uh, the the top of the house like that's the the main scare and the the rest of the movie offers a ton and also seeing yourself maybe feel like you've been shrunk into that small town on the table yeah and walking through that and maybe seeing other large figures around you that make you feel like you're small in a small little town yeah. um that that'd be cool as well I think what would be really cool too is like like the 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 room before you see like a or like in the beginning of the maze you see the model of the small town right there and then like later on mid maze you actually end up in the town which would be really cool it kind of yeah. transforms you into that whole thing and I think a perfect facade for this like I said on my podcast would be the inferno that you see throughout the entire you know in the movie where it yep. says like air conditioning in here and all that like that'd be a freaking awesome facade for this maze yeah yeah no I. I like this one through and through. Um, this is a great property with a ton of history with the event. Definitely, yeah. Beetlejuice, I'm all for it, man. I mean, uh, he, he. I think I think it was a big uh, tease, especially last year when he was at the '80s nights, just walking around and and you know just <laughs> just being funny and being Beetlejuice and stuff. So that was really cool. All right, Dungeon of Terror. Tell us a little bit about this. All right, so. Once again, another house that I didn't get the chance to, well, actually, I think we figured out that I actually did to get, get to experience the other house. But this one, I know for sure I did not experience. The Dungeon of Terror um, is an original house from when the, the, the event like first started with um, Fright Nights. Yeah. Um, so I've only seen very few small walkthroughs, and I've actually... Um, Actually, it's a good person to reference his loss. He did the history of Halloween Horror Nights, and he was doing it year by year. Yeah. And he, he actually captured a, a few clips or, or was able to find a few clips of the Dungeon and Terror. So um, as far as, like, what it was like, it looks like this was back in the day when we didn't live in that PC world, and terrifying was terrifying. Yeah. It was terrifying and dumbed down so that people didn't get offended. Yeah. Um, so how they would bring that house, how it originally was to today's day and age is interesting, but just the simple fact, I, I think one of the things that I appreciate a lot is when they bring back Halloween Horror Nights history to the event. So something that we've seen in the past and now we get to see it again with today's technology. Definitely. Um, that sounds awesome, man. I mean, I, I think I would really like to see something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, if it's part of the history of HHN, bringing it back for HHN 30 would only make sense just to reinvent it with today's effects and, and, and designs and stuff, which would probably just enhance it and make it a lot scarier. So I'm all for it. Uh, let's, let's do it. <laughs> the Adventures of <laughs> Sabrina, a Netflix property, uh, one of two Netflix properties that is being speculated for this year's HHN. Um, my personal opinion, I have not seen the show yet, so I, I don't know what to really look forward to in this show, and I don't know what I'd be getting myself into uh, walking through this maze. So I would have to definitely watch the show. I heard it's a very dark show, uh, but it's very Riverdale-like kind of Sabrina. You know, this is like the time where we're seeing like a – this is like the day and age, I guess, where they're trying to – when they're trying to redo a lot of shows – uh, that you kind of grew up with as a kid, but make them a more Riverdale style kind of young adult like show. Um, uh, kind of leading off the HHN boat for a little bit, but um, there's actually a a YouTube channel right now that is reinventing Scooby Doo into a Riverdale Riverdale like show, and it actually looks pretty interesting. Which I thought interesting. was interesting. Yeah, it looks really good actually because it looks more like serious and more adult, but it keeps the nostalgia of like the old school, like their costumes and everything, which I thought was really cool. Um, but going back to Sabrina, uh, this is kind of I, I've heard a lot of good things about the show. That it's got quite the fan base on Netflix. I think they're on like chapter three right now or something like that, which is basically season three. Um, 
and it's a lot darker and and stuff like that. So I I, I want to know. First off, I gotta watch the show, but I want to know if there's creatures in the show, and if so, will they incorporate these in the mazes? Um, what is really so scary about Sabrina that they can bring into the maze? That's that's my biggest question, and I gotta get that answered after I watch the show. Yeah, and I'm with you 100. percent Haven't watched the show. Um, I've seen the marketing and advertisement for it, which definitely looks like a darker version than the Sabrina the Teenage Witch that I'm used to. Yeah, the '90s uh, one back in the day, man, with the the puppeteer talking cat and everything. Yeah, she's not a cute blonde. Uh, yeah. This girl looks pretty menacing for a little girl, uh, at least in the advertisement that I've seen. So, yeah, I would withhold my opinions up till I watch an episode. But I, I can definitely see, even with the original, like, lighthearted TV show, mm-hmm. the, the cat and its witches, I could see that translated. And if they have now an updated, more menacing version... Um, even better. So yeah. um, this this was one that was speculated for last year as well. So you know Netflix. If Stranger Things isn't returning, I could see Netflix returning in this capacity. But what we'll speak of next is actually what I am looking forward to most. I think so. I think out of all this list, this is kind of going to be on my my top kind of priority as to if this does come to the um event this will be the maze that really will catch my attention the most which is the haunting of hill house um great show for one uh it's more of a psychological horror than it is your standard normal horror which i really enjoyed about it because every episode kept you wanting you know it kept wanting to push your boundaries as to you wanting more and and you trying to figure out this whole family and this whole like secret and eventually getting to that end because they do show a lot of clips in the beginning of this show where actually they make a lot more sense at the end of the show um an example i brought up on the podcast which is a a perfect example is remember in the very beginning of the show you actually see the mom like running in the hallway and it's all dark but it looked kind of scary of her just running at the husband i don't know if you remember that or not yeah yeah no i remember that yeah i just recently rewatched it yeah it it when I saw that, that scared the fuck out of me. But then when you get later on into the show, there's actually meaning to as why she did that. She didn't just do it to do it. There was like a meaning towards it. Um, so this this was definitely uh, – it, it had you everywhere in the show. I mean you got to see everyone's kind of point of view at one point too as to what they're going through as far as the deaths and everything. Um, and that's not a spoiler by the way. That's actually in the trailer. Um, <laughs> but – it, it also, I mean, the ghosts in this in this in this series were just you know terrifying. The top hat guy was terrifying. Um, the bent neck lady was terrifying. Uh, just what? yeah, just this whole the whole vibe. I think the scariest part in that whole show though was um, when the two sisters are driving and all of a sudden the other the ghost of the other sister just pops up right in the middle and just does that scream. Like if they can find a way to incorporate that into the maze, like I would love that. Yeah. So for me, if this gets announced and this current lineup ends up being the lineup, then this will be my number one anticipated house for the year. No doubt. No, agreed. The Haunting of Hill House has to be the scariest TV show I've ever watched. Yeah. Um, And even even puts some movies to shame. Yeah. With with what it's what 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 it was able to pull off. Um the the scenes and just the the subtle tones of this TV show are so eerie. Yeah. Um, a lot of the scenes of when they're in like the is it a mortuary or yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. right mortuary. um they they were terrifying they were terrifying yeah and then especially when they just shut off the lights and they just it's all dark in there they're all freaking out like yeah God. Then, the, then the connection with everything figuring out that. What and spoiler alert if you haven't watched the show, but figuring out that the apparition that they were seeing was actually a premonition of what would occur, yeah, to them, you know, yeah, that was that was trippy to find that out, right? The the Betnick lady was actually one of the The characters that was that was alive, the sister, right? Um, so yeah, it was it was terrifying. Um, I again, so psychological horror, you know what I mean. Yeah, and when they, when they announced the first sister passing away because she went back to the house, and the brother walks into the house and he sees her there. Yeah, the father calls on the phone and she's he's like, yeah, she's right here. And but like before he could say that, the the father's like, she went to the house, and he he's like, what? 
He's yeah. like, yeah, she went to the house and she's like, what are you talking about? Like Elle's right here. He turns around and she's like right in his face and she like all gray and like her mouth opens up. Yeah, it was terrifying. Um, and, and that mixed in with the fact that it's like an old Victorian uh, home with yeah. some of the most terrifying characters that we've seen on TV. I, I, I said this in my, in my speculation video that I released today. It's too easy to make amazing. Yeah. It's like, oh. so, I mean, obviously you guys know the story. There's been so many ad- adaptations of the, the Hill House um, hauntings over the years, which was actually a real thing that happened in real life to families. Um, the Hill House was a real place and everything. Um, so there's been so many adaptations of this, but I think by far this is the scariest, the most detailed, and the most best adaptation of a Hill House haunting ever. You know what I mean? Um and I really like what they did with this, especially going into the announcement of season two, which is going to be Bly House or Bly Manor. I'm sorry. Um, and what I like that they're doing is this season, the way it ended, it finished one story. So it's going to be like an American Horror Story type of thing where they're just going to keep going to different haunted locations based on on real events and and just use the same cast and just start start a new story, which I think is awesome. And I think uh, they were saying with Bly Manor too. Um, this, this, if you thought this season was scary, this season is going to be even scarier because of the the history that this this uh, manor has over the years, which I think is is very cool. Um, little side note too: if you did like Haunting of Hill House, the same guy who directed that that show and wrote that show and produced it um, actually direct and directed and wrote a movie called hush that's on Netflix. Oh, it's yeah. really good. That's talk about another psychological horror. That one's yeah. based off a deaf woman and there's an intruder trying to get into her house and she cannot like hear anything and like, and I think that's an amazing idea for a movie. Yeah. And he, he's just playing around with her at first, kind of like a cat yeah. playing with his food, trying to see his limits as to what he can do and stuff. And then eventually she catches on, but the whole movie is like, I think the whole movie takes place in like her point of view. Like you hear her talking in her thoughts, and yeah. and like there's some points where you just don't hear nothing to give that deaf vibe. You know what I mean? Which I thought yeah, was really cool. There's a lot of nothing. You hear a lot of nothing, and it's a lot of her like typing on her iPad, talking to her sister, yeah, and things like that. Yeah, it, that that was a an interesting movie and a concept that was pulled off really well. Yeah, and again. The guy who created Haunted the Hill House did that one too because that lady that he used in and in, in that and in Hill House is his wife in real life. So, um, yeah, I mean, just this guy is amazing, and I am a hundred percent on board for this maze. I think they can, if they collab together and really bring this to life and give us this experience, I will definitely be excited. They just have to do it right. Just don't give us a Stranger Things two kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the next one, another original for HHN Orlando, which is Legendary Truth, Cary, Ohio. What do you know about this? Um, so this one's kind of like a, a double-edged sword. So um, Cary, Ohio is something that is all around Halloween Horror Nights. If you see in a lot of the, the scare zones, you'll see signs like Welcome to Cary, Ohio and things of that nature. It's kind of like a running, um, I wouldn't say a running joke, but like a, a running concept. Yeah, that that universal kind of like an expanded lore. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. You you helped me a lot with that one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's 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 kind of like a continual lore of this Cary, Ohio, kind of like fictitious town that you'll you'll find this scare zone, like a the what's it called trick or treat that Mm -hmm. scare zone. It when you enter it on the right hand side, there was a sign. It was kind of tucked away, but it said "Welcome to Cary, Ohio." That same sign was there the previous year. When it was just kind of like pumpkins and pumpkin head type of people. Okay. Um, but you'll find it also inside of the houses as well. You got to look for it because it's not just bluntly out there. It's kind of like an inside thing that that um, either the true fans or the employees there at Universal Studios are aware of. Um, but that partnered with the Legendary Truth. The Legendary Truth is a time of Halloween Horror Nights when I really enjoyed Halloween Horror Nights. Um, the legendary truth was there for two years. I believe it was the uh, twenty years of fear, as well as the reflection of fear, um, which was uh, Bloody Mary, um, and the twenty years of fear was uh, fear himself. And uh, the legendary truth was basically uh, it, it was a couple things, but the the heart of it was a, an interactive uh, website where 
you were uncovering different pieces of evidence for something that occurred, um, either a disappearance or a death. I forget exactly what it was. Okay. All right. So we apologize for that that minor minor technical uh, difficulty. Technical difficulty. There we go. You're finishing all my sentences. Where I talking? am. <laughs> I am. Social distance couple, one on one that's, side of the east uh, the coast and the other one on the other side. So uh, the legendary truth of Cary, Ohio. Tell us a little bit about this lore of a Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. Okay, so I don't know what we captured before we cut off, so I'm just going to start all over again. So yeah. um, Cary, Ohio, once again, is kind of a internal Halloween Horror Nights Universal Studios lore that uh, some of the, the like hardcore fans as well as the people that work there are aware of, but your average person may overlook it completely. Uh, you'll find it in different scare zones as well as different places in actual houses, uh, but you have to look for it. It's not just sitting there. Um, so, for example, I was saying that um, Trick or Treat and the scare zone that was in the location of Trick or Treat before and after, actually, on the right-hand side, there's a little sign that they had placed. It's a little tucked away. You gotta. It's not like hidden, but you you wouldn't necessarily like focus on it because it looks yeah. like it's a, a prop. But it says "Welcome to Cary, Ohio." Um, and it's a fictitious location, but something that is kind of like a running lore with Halloween Horror Nights. Mix that in with the legendary truth, which the leg legendary truth goes back in the history of Halloween Horror Nights as some of the best times of Halloween Horror Nights, some of the best um, interactive sites for, for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, so the legendary truth was basically, um, the heart of it was an interactive website where... Okay. Um, basically they, they released like little pieces of evidence and investigations that were going on. And then you were recruited to become part of the legendary truth. I actually had those badges that I gave away and I need to send you one, um, nice. the legendary truth badges. Um, and, and basically you were recruited to be an investigator and help figure out, um, what had happened to this professor or this doctor who disappeared or was murdered. Um, and like, the, the more you, you figured out, there would be like puzzles and things that you would have to figure out as a collective. So like as a fan base, everybody that was, that was together working on it would figure out things day by day and that would give everybody more evidence. So it'd be, would, it, would this game be a lead up to the event then? Correct. It would be a lead up to the event. And I believe, I don't remember exactly, but I believe during the event there was also little games that you could play. Um, kind of like last year's graveyard games. I am all for that. That if I get to put on my Batman cow and get down to work, world's greatest detective over here, I'm all dude, for it, dude. I don't. I don't that, know how to that. Do. Okay, if that comes, that maze alone will make me come out to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, th this maze would be the end all to be all for the hardcore fanatic. Um, yeah. Even if you weren't there for these years, these are. Uh, no pun intended. These are legendary years. Like people are aware of the legendary truth. Um, but the, these are, I don't know if uh, Hollywood had this, but during these years, um, there, there was a lot of interaction with the websites that would lead up to the first announcement. Usually back then, the, the first announcement would happen in June as opposed to now it happens like in February or March. Well, not given the current situation, but it had become that it would become the, the announcements would come so soon. But back yeah. then the announcements would start coming in like June and July and they would only come if you were interactive with the website and were actually like solving these puzzles. And um, I remember for one year, uh, I forget who, who it was. Um, uh, I, I think her name was like lucky seven or something like that. Um, don't, don't quote me on that, but it was, something of that nature and basically you could go on on the website every single day and try your luck at um a, a puzzle and every single you you would only be able to try like once a day and it would give you give you information if you got it correct everybody got to the next step together oh nice so basically everybody's working as a collective together to open up the website more and the more you figured out the more things that would pop up on the website like the like scare zones would pop up and then yeah. the houses would pop up and um, shows all that stuff. Stories. Yeah. yeah. Who, who was the, the icon of that year? Things of that. So nature. 
that you said it was it was once a day. Does that mean it only one person can go on per day or everyone can go on once a day? So everybody could go on once a day and try their luck at it. Okay. And as a collective, if one person got it right, everybody everyone got it, got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. No, I like that. And it, to to mix two um one being a giant easter egg that's probably been with the event for the 30 year history and and, and uh, you know the legendary truth kind of lore to bring the two together and finally give the legendary truth of Cary, ohio you're finally going to go into the into the world of of this this you know fictitious Cary, ohio where you know you've been hearing about it you've been seeing about it for the event all the all these years and now you're finally going to get a story behind what the hell is this place you know what i mean so I think that's a fantastic idea, and from what Legendary Truth kind of sounds similar to like to me is the uh, paranormal ink maze that we have over here at Not Scary Farm, which puts you into the uh, show of paranormal ink, uh, and you go into this abandoned hospital and you're and you're trying to solve you know this mystery of what went down here. So um, I think this is a great idea. I love it, especially when stuff is very interactive because I am a sucker for interactivity. Um, it, it's awesome, especially with graveyard games, how they did that last year where you can go on like their social medias and then yeah. see what the, the characters were talking about and stuff before you went into the maze. I thought that was a really cool idea. So if they're going to incorporate and bring back the legendary truth, which from a lot of the original properties we've been seeing at Orlando this year, they really want to bring that nostalgia of for the diehard fans who've been going all 30 years or who've yeah. been going for majority of the years, you know, and who've witnessed a lot of these, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, and if the if the event ends up getting minimized because of the current events and social distancing, then they could technically remove all the IPs, save themselves the money of having to license those IPs, and just use their own... Uh, originals which at this point have been around for so long and uh, the the like actual true fans are so familiar with it it almost is an ip to us oh no and definitely and not to mention they have so many originals to work with they can create an entire event out of that alone mm -hmm. which would be perfect for the 30 year and i think it would make that year way better than including you know, IPs in it because yeah. that would drive not only fans that are in the area, but people like you and me who are out of states, that would drive people out of states just to come down to this event. Yeah, and uh, the Legendary Truth was there for the 20th year anniversary, which was Fear himself. Okay. Uh, and I, I think originally it was there for a reflection of fear, which was uh, the Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing a lot of the promos for that and the opening yeah. scare movies for that, and which I, was really cool. I think also one year... Uh, the Legendary Truth had its own um, separately paid haunted house, which was a 3D haunted house where you actually like put on a 3D mask and walk through the house, which I didn't get to experience, but would have been pretty cool. Sounds good, man. All right. And finishing it up with uh, the last uh, house over here for HHN 30 Orlando, it, which is a shared property with both Hollywood and Orlando is Gremlins. Now, I've never seen Gremlins, um, but just seeing the puppets, like, I don't think I'd be a big fan of them. But I've had tell pe I've had people tell me that this is actually a pretty, you know, funny comedy horror type movie. And of course, I mean, I, I probably should watch it because my favorite director, one of my favorite directors of all time, Steven Spielberg, directed this. So it's got to be somewhat good. I mean, I think it's grown its fan base within the last couple of years than it has when it first came out. And yeah. it just has that cult following. So yeah. uh, what, what are your thoughts on Gremlins coming to the event? Uh, I, I think it's crazy that you haven't watched it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> given that you're a horror fan, given the name of your channel, I think this is a must. Um, so we're going to change the name of your channel temporarily up to you finish watching it, okay? Um, no, I'm kidding. But Gremlins is exactly that. It's a cult classic. Um, I, I think it's one of those those uh, those properties that when the movie originally came out, it didn't do well in theaters. But with time, kind of like, um, uh, what's it called? Um, the, the, the Shining. Uh, it, most people won't know this, but The Shining didn't actually do well in theaters. It yeah. only throughout the years actually built a cult, uh, cult following. It originally actually was hated by the writer. The what's his name? Stephen, uh, Stephen King. Yeah, Stephen King actually hates that movie to yeah. this day. Uh, actually, no, he's he's come to terms with it now because if you watched a lot of the promo for uh, Doctor Sleep, he was at a lot of the press conferencing and he yes, come to terms. But he he said Doctor Sleep was actually basically making up 
for the original shiny movie because with dr sleep he said that it, it did an amazing job you know telling the story of his book but it also did an amazing job giving you a, a sort of sequel for the shining which yeah. was but like like that is gremlins it didn't do amazing originally but it built a, a huge cult following and i, I love the movie um, yeah. gremlins is a is a funny concept that um it, it's a cute fuzzy toy and i <laughs> the funny thing about it is it's so avoidable right the the circumstances that cause the issue is don't feed the damn thing water or let it come in contact with water it's not that hard but Somehow, some way, they get in contact with water, and they go from cute to these hideous little monsters that wreak havoc. Which uh, is funny because seventy five percent of this damn earth is water, <laughs> right? And most most living creatures are made of a large portion of water, water as well. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I would be a huge fan of this. This is something that I think would be really cool. I'd love to see how they pull it off. Um, I, I could definitely see a couple of ways that they could pull it off going into like a room with a lot of these little guys just wreaking havoc and throwing objects across the room and whatnot. Hopefully they don't hit you because then, or hopefully they do hit you and you can sue the, the, the park and make a lot of money. But how are we going to sue uh, HHN then? We can never have an HHN ever again. No, I, I would just, I wouldn't sue them. I, I would, I would settle, uh, outside of court for a pass for the rest of my life. Lifetime and, front of the line pass every night, and, and a hotel paid for for the rest of my life, and uh, other accommodations like food and things like that. So every single year when I come, everything paid for. I, I get like the 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 suite at the Hard Rock. The only the only thing you got to pay for is your flight out there. Yeah, f funny enough, a uh, bit of a tangent, completely side story. But I was getting in line one time for um, what's it called, uh, Harry Potter. Um, escape from Green Gods. Yeah. And the attendant was blocking the entrance, and I was kind of trying to like sneak past her so I could get in line. She wasn't blocking it to not let people in. She was just kind of standing there talking to somebody. And as I went to sneak past the side of her, she turned around and elbowed me in the chest. And I was huh? like, oh, a lawsuit playing around. And I was like, I'm just kidding. And she was like, she was like, can I, I'm so sorry. Can I give you a speed pass for the rest of your day? And I was like, hell yeah. Got a hell speed yeah. Pass. And I was like, but I'm here with my friend. And she gave us two. Nice. Yeah. So I should have so got it all worked out. So yeah, Gremlins. Um, <laughs> I definitely got to check it out. It's definitely been on my watch list for a while, actually. And now that I have more time on my hands, I might actually start. Uh, I might check it out one of these nights. But yeah. Um, as far as shows go for your event, we're looking at Academy of Villains, and there's a potential of bringing back the Lagoon show because I guess it was such a big hit last year. It looked amazing from the footage I've seen, and that was just footage. So I can only imagine what it's like in person. Um. But those are the two shows speculated to come back this year. Um, Academy of Villains, again, is no uh, no, um, no news to everybody. I mean, Academy of Villains is very popular in Orlando. Um, better than the Jabberwockies, I can tell you that. Anything's better than that. Anything's but, uh, better than the Jabberwockies. <laughs> Academy of Villains was cool. Maybe not something that I would frequent every single year. Um, yeah. Because the, the Fear Factor live stage does get pretty hot. Um, yeah. Even though you get to like sit and relax, it gets pretty stuffy in there. So if it's Academy of Villains again, then I personally will probably avoid it. But the Lagoon show last year was amazing. Uh freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, a spectacle that you must see if you go to Halloween Hornets. You have to make a time to watch it from beginning to end. Um, and if it does come back this year, which I don't see why not, it's... It's oh, it was so popular last year from crowds for when I've seen that surrounded that lagoon. I mean, I don't see why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they bring it back? I mean, if it's if it's driving crowds in, you got it. You got yourself a hit right there. Yeah, and what better way to pay homage to the thirty years of Halloween Horror Nights than with a lagoon show kind of cataloging the years? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that would be great. And if they really do want to bring Billie Eilish and they can't find a way to pull off her house that's another perfect way to bring her in i, I think so. although i give billy eilish a hard time because i really don't want her to be a house i think her being the music behind the fountain show or the lagoon show is perfectly acceptable definitely and just if you guys want to if they wanted to like incorporate a lot of the properties 
that are at the event this year and just throwing in her music. I'm pretty sure they can find a way to incorporate clips and shit, mm-hmm. you know, from each property and, and put her music in. I mean, you know, you just got to find the right person. You got to literally sit down and listen to all her songs and then find what fits best in which areas, you know, it's just that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and- from the Lagoon Show aspect, if it ends up being a Lagoon Show, kind of going over the the history of Halloween Horror Nights, then the actual music itself, I don't think necessarily needs to be scary music. It, it could actually be more emotional music because most people are going to be having a, an emotional connection to the fact that it's been around for so long and look at all these things that have been done. Definitely. No, yeah, I agree. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is your 2020 HHN leaked lineup or speculation lineup, however you want to look at it. Um, again, like Eddie said in the beginning of this video, this will probably be changing as more announcements get announced. That's usually how it works. Stuff doesn't always, you know, fall into place at uh, with Horror Nights. Um, stuff is constantly getting switched over due to due to um, rights and stuff. Um, I'm already hearing right now that. Um, Gremlins There's out. Gremlins, and there was another property that was out. Um, it, it, it may have been. So I think it was Sabrina because that's a Warner yeah, Brothers. Sabrina. So uh, there's already rumors and talks that those two are out, and the the next two that are and and potential for taking over one is Invisible Man, and two. What was the other one we were talking about? There was another like, oh, probably something Blumhouse related. Yeah. Um, and the, the thing about it is, just because it changes doesn't mean that this currently isn't correct. Yeah. If there's anything that I know is that Halloween Horror Nights is playing with intellectual properties that they don't own, and sometimes people pull out. Warner Brothers is a big uh, uh, they, their pullout game is is on, on point. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Um, no, they they do it, and I and I wouldn't be surprised if they did it this year, since there is talks of them bringing back Horror Maid here this year. Um, being that they took a break off last year, there is talks about them bringing that event back this year. So I don't know what we can expect at that event if it does come back. So if we get any news on Horror Nights, if we get any news on Horror Maid here, be sure to lock back to Knights of Horror and East versus West. Uh, also, if there's any new Orlando news, be sure to lock back to Eddie Tamet because he'll be covering. Uh, that within the next couple weeks, if it does anything does come out, um, be sure to turn in next week because I'm thinking I was thinking of this the entire thing. What do you think about this? I think next week on East versus West, we should both sit down and have a um, a maze building um, ideas kind of video where me and you bounce each other off properties. We give our kind of synopsis of each maze of things we would love to see to come to the event and ultimately. Uh, have a, a talk about it. What do you think about that? I'm down. I'm locked in. You got me locked and loaded. When do you want to locked do it? in? You guys heard it here first. Tune in next week for a new episode of East versus West, where we sit down, talk about some dream mazes coming to the event, and we give our pitch to what we would put in these mazes to make them come true. Um, that is gonna do it this week for East versus West. Thanks for coming back and and uh, thanks for waiting for so long. We're the type of channel that likes to just drop one out of nowhere, you know? We like to have yeah. surprises every now and then. Yeah, we can't let you guys get our rhythm, you know? I know. You, you know, yeah. you think you, when you think you got us, you don't. Exactly. There's like because... a changing your, your route when, when you drive home so people don't follow you type of thing. Because you know? we, just threw, we just threw a curveball <laughs> at you. We never done a back-to-back week after week East versus West, and we're going to do it this week and next week. So, boom, mic or, drop. Or are we? Or are we? <laughs> oh, exactly. We might just save it. We might just save it for like another couple months. No, but uh, we should do it for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So tune in next week for that, and uh, tune into both channels to for new uh, content. Um, and yeah, that is uh, gonna do it. I'm Anthony. That's my host Eddie. East versus West. Deuces. Your dose of both coasts. <laughs> Your dose of social distancing from both both coasts. Both coasts. Boom. I'll see you guys later. Both coasts.